I'm delighted to be able to say a few words about some of the steps we're taking to address what is undoubtedly the defining challenge of our age and why pouring our support into both protecting and helping nature recover will help us address so many other serious challenges at the same time. Now, I won't rehearse all the grim facts and figures of destruction as you will be familiar with them, but it is worth just reminding ourselves that we're currently losing around 30 football pitches worth of forest every single minute, that a million species currently face extinction, including 40% of the world's plants, and that just as we're stripping the ocean of life at a terrifying rate, we're filling it with trash just as quickly, and all of this against the backdrop of an increasingly destabilised climate. Now, there is plenty of science telling us that we're heading for disaster, but you don't need to be a scientist to understand that these trends cannot be allowed to continue without all of us paying a terrible price. Indeed, indigenous people have been sounding the alarm for decades. The magic of protecting and restoring the diversity, abundance and connectivity of life on Earth is that in doing so, we're also tackling hunger, poverty, pollution and climate change, as well as reducing the risk of deadly zoonosis. I'd go further than that and say that it is not possible to properly address these issues, or indeed climate change, without a focus on nature. Globally, nature-based solutions could provide around a third of the most cost-effective solution to climate change, but currently less than 3% of global climate finance is invested in nature, and that needs to change and change fast. We have a monumental challenge on our hands, but we know that change is possible. And I encourage anyone in need of inspiration to look at Costa Rica. They've managed to double their rainforest cover in a generation, putting more than half their country under canopy. And their economy has grown alongside their nature. So we need to raise global ambition and finance to match. So as presidents of the G7 and COP26, we're putting nature at the heart of our response, both to tackling climate change and so many other challenges besides. We're urging governments to increase their international climate finance and to spend more of it on nature. In the UK, we've committed to doubling our international climate finance to 11.6 billion and to investing at least three billion pounds of that on solutions that protect and restore nature. And we're calling on the multilateral development banks to mainstream nature right across their portfolios and to support countries in fulfilling their commitments. We're also building alliances of countries committed to breaking the link between commodity production and global deforestation, asking producer and consumer countries to work with us to clean up global commodity supply chains, just as we're doing via legislation here in the UK. And we're building alliances of countries committed to reorientating support for agriculture. The annual $700 billion, for instance, that the top 50 food producing countries provide for often destructive land use. We're supporting the establishment of global frameworks for climate and nature related financial disclosures to help businesses understand and reduce environmental risk. And we're supporting efforts to create high integrity voluntary carbon markets that will get private finance flowing for the benefit of climate, nature and people. And as you heard from the UK Prime Minister, we're proudly involved in building and shaping the hugely exciting LEAF Coalition. Global targets, declarations and deadlines have come and gone, and yet deforestation continues apace. So we hope and believe that this collaboration between governments and the private sector will become the largest ever commitment of finance for protecting tropical forests. And we hope that it will genuinely move the dial on deforestation. All this will help front runners in the race to zero and inspire others to raise their game. The single biggest challenge we all face is reconciling our lives and our economies with the natural world on which all of us depend. And the case couldn't have been made any clearer in the recently published Das Gupta report. At this point, none of us can say that we're doing enough. 
But turning this trajectory around is the UK's top international priority. And we hugely welcome the leadership that the new US administration is clearly willing to provide. If we work together, governments, businesses, NGOs, civil society, north, south, east, west, developing countries, developed countries, I have no doubt that we can make this the year that we fundamentally reset our relationship with the natural world. Thank you.